Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're playing Lying to Your Face. Quite an unusual name for a puzzle, I must say. So, trying to come up with a thumbnail that's all about lying was actually a little bit challenging, which is why you're looking at this particular book. So, whenever I'm struggling for ideas, I kind of Google the main theme of the puzzle, which is about lying. And, um, you know, the first few images that came back were former US presidents, um, Democratic ones and Republican ones that were caught lying. And I thought, well, that's not really a landmine I want to step on. So I went for kind of famous liars in fiction instead. And the one that really caught my attention was Gatsby, as in from The Great Gatsby. And in particular, there's a one, fam one famous line in there, which is around the fact that he, has to have, he used to have a library full of books, but he clearly never had read the books because the books themselves were never cut open. And now, maybe for the younger viewers, I'd need to explain what it means by cutting a book open, because certainly uh, in the olden days, you used to have to actually print books on much larger pieces of paper, then you fold up the paper and you stitch all of them together. But the folds themselves, certainly in the printing presses that were a little bit older, didn't used to necessarily get cut off, and you actually used to sometimes need to get like a, a letter opener or a knife or something, or a carpet cutter, to actually open up all of these sheets so that you can actually, well, open up the book. And you know, I'm old enough to at least have bought a few books like that and a few magazines and comics. So yeah, something new for our younger viewers. Right, the puzzle itself, I selected it because it's only a six by six puzzle. And we had a you know, fairly set of difficult puzzles for the weekend. So I'm hoping that we'll get to start Monday on something a little bit easier. Let's take a look at today's puzzle. So, Lying Right to Your Face by Sudoku. This is a normal, irregular six by six uh, Sudoku. So we need to place the digits one to six once each in every row in every column, but also in every one of these irregular regions. And they kind of have a very consistent shape, except for the ones in the middle that are slightly different, right? So that's the usual rule set. Here's the lying part, relic cages. So all cages are relic cages. In a relic cage, digits do not repeat, and any combination of one or more digits within that cage cannot sum to the value in the top left corner. Right. So this might be very awkward to try and... Yeah, this may be very awkward to try and explain without actually partially solving. I'm going to try and give it a go, and I think the three cage is probably the easiest one to go. So one example of that rule is I can't put the digits three in here. So the three would have to go into the six. Secondly, if I place the digit one inside the cage, I now cannot place the digit two because one and two would add up to three. So the two would have to be in here and so on and so forth. So the idea is no single combination of the digits that are in these cages, and they're all three cell cages, can add up to, <clears throat> excuse me, the cage total or supposed total because it's, you know, lying to you. Hopefully that's clear enough. Um, if you want to play along, if you want to sort of travel down memory lane with The Great Gatsby or at least play this puzzle, the link will be in the description down below as usual. And if you're feeling a little bit confused, um, watch for a few minutes. I'll probably start with the top left cages. These are probably the easiest to get going and then hopefully that will be enough of a clue to crack on with it yourself. Right, link in the description down below as usual. And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So, five cage. Well, can't have five in the five cage, otherwise you've already achieved the total. Second, you place the five in the eight cage. Well, I can't place the three next to it, otherwise three and five would add up to eight. So three would have to go in here. Now, if I place a two, well, I've broken it because two plus three is equal to five. So the two would have to go here in... Uh, two would have to go in there in the eight cage. And now I can't place the one. If I place the one, one, two, and five add up to eight exactly, but one has to go in there. 
I now can't place the 4 cage inside the 5, because 1 and 4 add up to 5. So 4 is in there, 6 in there. That's a complete pencil mark of these two cages. So can't do 4 in here. 4 is there. Can't add 3. Can't add 1 now. Can't add 2 in here. And then... Can't put 6 inside the 7, because 1 and 6 would equal to 7. So that's 6. That's 5. That's another set of cages that are pencil marked. So what I'm tempted to do is... Because a regular Sudoku tends to catch me out. Let's not wait until I pencil mark all the cages before I start thinking, you know, doing things I spot, such as where does two go in column one? Well, it can only be in one or two cells in here. That's not a two. You can see I spotted a lot of things. Okay. Three cage and six cage. We started with this. This has to be the three. Hmm. There's a lot more degrees of freedom in here, so that's why I'm just pausing now. Okay, let's carry on with a regular Sudoku for a second. So if you think about column one, in particular, these two cells. Where are these two cells in this region? Well, they're clearly in none of these cells. So the only places for these two cells to be is here and here. And the only common digit between these three cells is the one. So that's one. These are not ones. That's not a one. This is a one, three, six to match these two. Kind of got something very similar going on here. I don't know if I want to go down that route just yet. Feels like a lot of pencil marking. Come on, Sleuth, let's just think about this one and solve it. Can't place the six inside the six cage. Oops, right, that's an obvious one. Um, the six, absolutely, no. Six is here. Because these two K cells have to match these two cells. So clearly one of them is three, one of them is six, or at least one of them is a three, six, and the other one might be a two. Right. Let's see if what else we can do. Got three, six in here. This is two, four, five. This is going to be now 136, which is actually kind of helpful because it removes three from all of these. That's the three. No threes in there. That's a six. That's a two. That's a three. These are not sixes. That is a six. These are now from 145. And this has to be a two. Just completing the region. So that's not a 2. That can't be a 4 or a 1, because 2 and 4 would add up to 6. 2, 1, and 3 would have all 3 add up to 6. So this has to be a 5. This is a 4. These are not 5s. Hopefully that's all looking good for 3. That looks good for 3. This is a 2-5 pair. This is now a 1-4-6 triplet. Completing this region, this is now a 2-3-5 triplet. These two cells are from 1, 4, and 6, just to complete the column. That's not a 4. You can see that these two cells have to be the same. So again, back to where do these two cells go in this entire region? Well, one of them clearly matches this one. But this cell have nothing in common. So this 2, 5 is definitely in here. And can we do the same trick? 
kind of. We know that this one of these has to have a 6. We'll do that anyway because of the column. And the other one is a 1, 4. Kind of surprised I haven't resolved more of the puzzle yet. None of these are 1s. Probably should be thinking about looking for pairs and triplets in each row. This is not a 2. There's a definite 2 in here. Definite 1 in there. So, yeah, actually, just how about Sudoku, Sleuth, 5, 4, not 4s, um, and clearly this is the 1 now. That's not a 1. 5s gives me a 2, 3 pair up there. Four six one four six four five. Not really seeing anything horizontally. I know I've been looking predominantly at columns, regions, but horizontal is not really pointing anything out. Two five, um, a pair in here, which gives me a three, a two. The three eliminates a number of options. I mean, we knew that was that didn't have a three because of the one six. So that's one six two five three. Where does four go in the row? It can only be in here. Right, 4 can't have a 6 in the same cage in a 10, that's a 1. That can't be a 5, otherwise we're in trouble because all of that would add up to 10. That's 2, 5, 2, none of these are 1s. That is a 1, that's a 6, that's a 3, that's a 1. Right, I think we've sold this 3 up down here, that's, whoops. That's a 6, that's a 3, that's a 5, 2... Right, one in here, that's four, one. That four removes a four from here. This is a one, six, that's not one. That's six, that's four, six. Right, I think we are gonna solve this and in pretty decent time. So it's a good puzzle certainly to pick for a Monday morning. And if I've not made any other mistakes, that's a three for the finish. That's a beautiful puzzle, Sujoiko. Um, you know, I'm glad I sort of went back to it. It's about a month old at this point. What did it say? Yeah, 23 days. So i um, definitely glad I featured it. And it is highly approachable. So certainly I hope, despite the slightly more confusing and unfamiliar Sudoku variant rules, that you guys enjoyed it as well. So, um, only thing left to say. Hope that you enjoyed the puzzle in the video. And... Maybe check out some of the other irregular Sudokus that YouTube's going to recommend to you next. It's not something that we tend to solve very often on the channel, but they do play quite unusual, such as these one twos, etc. So give it a go. See you back for the next video. Bye bye for now.